Well, welcome everyone. Um, hello from Chicago, Illinois. Good morning. It is around 10 a.m. Central Time here. We have our whole team ready to start the day. We're excited to give this webinar and talk about the match application and how you can improve your chances in matching. Um, AM opportunities, we have a lot of success and we cannot wait to share some of those numbers with you. But also we cannot wait to learn more about your educational journey, you know, when you're planning to match. And we want to you know, be able to discuss how AM opportunities plays into your match application and how you can really stand out with AM opportunities clinical experiences. So um, AM opportunities, well, we provide clinical education for healthcare schools and students. My name is Ryan. We also have Delaney here. We are both advisors um, here at AMO, and our goal is speaking with you, learning more about you know, your medical education journey, your goals for the future, and we've always wanted to fill in how AM opportunities can play a role in that. All right, so who is AMO? As I mentioned, we create U.S. clinical experiences for medical students and graduates globally. And really, our services and online platform enable U.S. hospitals and clinics to open their doors to the larger U.S. and international communities. So we work with um, U.S. hospitals, U.S. Uh, hospital departments, private preceptors to offer clinical experiences to the international community so that you are able to gain U.S. clinical exposure in a very fast and easy manner. Um, so we're excited to talk to you more about that. So really quickly, how does AMO help? I love this slide early on because it goes over exactly what we hope to achieve um, as advisors, but also as AMO. So when you work with AM opportunities, you are essentially guaranteed placement in the programs that we offer. So we have affiliations with hospitals, different preceptors, and these are all available to you on the AMO platform. Now, when you see an available seat on our website, and Delaney will take us on the website a little bit later, but when you see an available seat, um, you, you know right then and there that that seat is still available to book and to apply, to apply to and then to book. When you reserve that rotation after your application is approved, we guarantee that seat, right? So you can simply search, apply, and book on demand. There's no fee to apply. There's no fee to talk to an advisor. You only pay a fee when you reserve your rotation. And when you reserve your rotation, you are guaranteed that placement. Um, that can be a lot different than if you were to use uh, or apply directly to a hospital where they might charge you an application fee. And you might find out the seat isn't available because others were applying um, and you didn't get it. Maybe then you lose that $200. With AMO, that, that is not the case. When you see a seat is available on our website, you are able to apply and book on demand and you are guaranteed that seating. So additionally, we do offer one-to-one -one world class support. And I know it says, you know, after you reserve your program, and yes, you get one-to-one -one world class support after, but we also provide that before you reserve a rotation. And that's in the form of our advisor team. So advisors like myself and Delaney, you know, we work with you individually one-on-one -on -one so that we can help you find the best rotation to fit your needs, and then we can help you apply um, so that all your questions are answered, you feel confident in what you're applying for, which means you'll feel confident reserving the rotation. Now, after you reserve your rotation, the world-class support doesn't stop. It only continues. So you're going to be matched with an AMO coach who offers you one-on-one -on -one assistance if you need to, say, obtain a visa because you're coming in person, you know, they can help get you a visa support letter. Um, we also help with housing recommendations if you join in person, transportation um, the recommendations, logistical recommendations when you book your rotation. Our coaches are there to help you um, kind of plan everything out. You know, we know the rotation is only one part of the experience. Um, we know coming for the rotation, being comfortable, uh, knowing what to expect is just as important. Our coaches are there to help you with that, even for virtual rotations. You know, in real time, the coaches are available to meet with you, answer your questions, help you with any document uploads. Um, so we're always going to be there by your side. And what I want to definitely stress is when you start your rotation, we're still there by your side. Maybe not physically, but you will always have a coach that you can contact, you know, during your rotation. You know, say it's day one and you went to the wrong place. You can message your coach. They're going to be there to help make sure you do uh, find the right facility or the preceptor knows you're coming. 
Um, but I also want to mention, like even with the letters of recommendation, and we're gonna talk more about letters later, but we know how important letters of recommendation are. Every preceptor allows uh, the ability to earn a merit-based letter of recommendation. And we also recognize having the conversation with the preceptor about the letter that you hope to earn, about what you hope to achieve, that can be a scary conversation for some. Our coaches are there to help you with that conversation, right? They're not going to maybe talk to the physician for you about that LOR, but they are definitely there to help you have that, like to help you um, talk to the coach so that you can feel comfortable having that conversation with the preceptor. It's not uncommon to go to your coach after you know a week and say, hey, I just, I feel like maybe um, I need to talk with the doctor more about what I'm hoping to earn in the letter. You know, Coach Justin, can you help me with that conversation or what have others, um, how have others started that conversation? Again, the coaches are gonna be there to guide you. We want you to earn that letter of recommendation just as badly as you want to earn it. And I can say confidently, the physicians want to write those letters as well. Um, so again, we're here to support you throughout the rotation um, as well as after. Lastly, oh, go on, Delaney, yes. I do want to share that I have, and I'm going to put our emails in the chat. So if anyone here does have questions that, you know, maybe you want to have a conversation, a one-on-one -on -one conversation with either me or Ryan or any of the advisors so that we can help you, uh, you can send an email to us. And then also, if you have any questions that maybe we don't answer, you can send your WhatsApp number as like a one-on-one -on -one message to either me or Ryan uh, so that we can personally reach out to you. Just wanted to add that. <laughs> no, that's perfect, Delaney. And thank you for, actually, thank you for adding that. I think that was the perfect time. It not only let me get a sip of coffee, but um, it also plays into that world-class support. Email, WhatsApp, phone call. We want to be available where it's most convenient for you. All of the advisors have a personal calendar link we all have a personal AMO iPhone. You can use that calendar link to schedule a call with us when it's available on our calendar and it's most convenient to you. If you prefer WhatsApp, you can leave a note. Hey, I prefer a WhatsApp call. We know international calls can be expensive. If you prefer a Zoom call, you have a steady internet connection, we can meet face-to-face -face or by call during Zoom. And that is just an ex a continued expansion of that world-class support. We want to make it easy for you to connect with us. We want to make it easy to conversate. Um, and as Delaney said, it's as easy as leaving an email address, leaving us a WhatsApp number, and our advisor team will reach out. Um, the last part I just wanted to mention here is just standing out in the match. And I think that's what we're all here for, right? How can we improve our chances of matching? And we're going to get into that. But I, what I can tell you um, before we dive more into it is that our clinical rotations do help you earn a merit-based letter of recommendation directly from the preceptor. These are personal, these are very valuable. They're not template LORs. AMO doesn't facilitate the letters. We don't see them, we don't write them, we don't edit them. Um, they are from the preceptor and they are a personal you know, letter between you and the doctor. And I think that's really important. And again, we'll get into this a little bit later, but you want a personal LOR. You want one that speaks to your character, to your clinical knowledge, to your clinical skills. And all the preceptors that we work with are experts at that. They are familiar with the ERAS, they are familiar with the match, they are familiar with you know, the IMG population and how important you are to the US healthcare system. They want to write these letters, they want you to match. Just kind of make sure you put in the effort. And I will say ev almost every single um, trainee who comes through earns a letter of recommendation. So you have the best opportunity with an AMO clinical experience to earn those. Let me just get to the next. Perfect. So before Delaney takes um, us on the website and kind of gives you an idea of what the platform looks like and how you can use our search platform, um, I do want to just highlight some of the awards that we have uh, kind of, you know, that we've kind of uh, racked up along the years um, with the world-class support that we're providing. So we did start in 2014, arranging clinical rotations. Um, and you'll see as the years have kind of compiled up, we've gained a lot of awards throughout. Um, starting with, you know, the University of Chicago New Venture Challenge, all the way until two, 2021, probably my personal favorite award, which was the U.S. Department of Commerce President's E Award for Exports. That is because of the clinical training that we're providing to the international medical community. And that award comes directly from the U.S. 
uh, president, the, the president of the United States. So it's one of those awards that we really do cherish. We love sharing with the international community because what we do um, is impacting you know, education everywhere. Um, so with that, I just wanted to kind of show these awards early on and I will allow, allow Delaney to kind of talk about our clinical experiences. Thank you, Ryan. Also, I do see we have some questions which we'll start going over after I show you all the website. So definitely please keep the questions coming. So yes, we provide clinical experiences for you all. We have both in-person as well as virtual. So it's just more important to understand you know, what's most important to you. Uh, with the uh, in-person rotations, they are on the same caliber as the virtual rotations. And we'll be getting more into that later. A little bit about the differences. So with the hands-on, you are able to speak with the patients, participate in non-invasive procedures. While with the observerships, it will just, uh, you'll be shadowing the physician and observing the top procedures. So again, both of them highly, uh, really great programs um, and types of programs. We also do have, uh, you know, nursing, uh, dentistry, research, and more. So uh, we'll get more into that, but a lot of different options for everyone. So as I mentioned, we do have the virtual rotations, and these are at top hospitals, clinics, universities, all with uh, great academic affiliations as well as hospital affiliations. Um, so these would be a rotation, you know, if you still want to participate, um, but you can do these in your home country. So uh, a lot of times, either if you're wanting to save money or you just want uh, to see the telehealth you know, our U.S. healthcare system for telehealth, um, this would be an option for you. Personally, in the conversations that I've had uh, with students and graduates, you know, they'll do one in person, one virtual, just so they can see, you know, the entire uh, experience of the U.S. healthcare system. And uh, just a little bit more, you are able to you know, as a save money in a sense with these virtual rotations because you know you're not paying for accommodations. Um, this could also be helpful if uh, there might be uh, trouble securing a visa. Um, we do provide visa support, which I can go into that a little later for you all. But again, the virtual experiences are amazing. I believe we have over forty or so, so in many different specialties. And yeah, I, again, I'll go over them once we go over the, the, the platform. So the benefits of these amazing clinical experiences with AMO, uh, number one, you are able to you know, build your CV and resume. Uh, so either way, if you're wanting to become a doctor in the US and you are wanting to apply to the US residency match, or if you know you're wanting to become a doctor, you know in your home country, but you want this very valuable uh, experience for your resume. Either way, uh, it's very beneficial to you in your journey into becoming a doctor. And as this whole uh, webinar is about, you know, the importance of uh, you know your clinical rotations when applying to the U.S. residency match, you are able to earn letters of recommendation from the US physicians. I know Ryan mentioned it a bit, uh, but they are 100% merit-based, meaning they're personalized to you. The physician you know, themselves will write it for you. Uh, so with that, you are able to use those letters of recommendations when applying to the US residency match. And also you're able to just expand your network uh, you know, you're creating these amazing relationships with the physicians um, that, you know, if you are becoming a doctor in the U.S. one day, you know, that's very beneficial to you. And then some other benefits, you know, if you, uh, you can potentially use our rotations for your university credit, um, that would definitely be a conversation with any of the advisors uh, just to make sure that, you know, it aligns with your university as well as your needs. Um, and then just overall, you can uh, use the experience to help you with the steps, you know, gaining knowledge that way. Yeah, many, many benefits. I could keep going, <laughs> uh, but that is where we'll start for now. <laughs> okay, so... 
This is the exciting part where I'm going to show you the website and our platform. Yeah, so I'm going to share my screen with you all. And while Delaney is pulling up um, her screen for the website, I, I did see a question come in that I thought might be a good chance to kind of just um, answer here. So is hands-on opportunity for clinical rotations only available for undergraduates or graduates? Really great question. Um, Hands-on opportunities are available to both undergraduates or graduates. However, depending on what type of rotation you're interested in and your academic status, whether you are a student or a graduate, that might determine what type of rotation you can do. So it really is more on eligibility. But again, if you are really interested in one specific type of rotation and you're not sure, speak with our advisor team and we will help guide you. Um, what I will say is both hands-on and observerships do um, earn the same type of letter of recommendation. So I know that's usually um, the most important part is, you know, is hands-on more valuable than observing? No, it's not. You can really earn the same type of letter of recommendation and submit that for your match application. So sorry, Delaney, I stole the show a little, but I'll, I'll pass it back to you. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. No, it's very important. And truly as an advisor, that's a question that I get a lot is are, you know, the virtual, the hands-on observership, are they on different levels? And they're not, they're truly all very high caliber and uh, beneficial. Uh, so it, again, it's just finding what aligns with your needs. So this is our platform. And this is the, in a sense, homepage when you're looking for the different rotations we offer. As you can see, we do have 331 different rotations. And what's easiest in order to narrow down is by using these filters up here. So what I usually recommend is if you do know your specialty, that will you know start uh, narrowing it down quicker, as well as a state that maybe you wanna visit. So for example, as I said, we're based in Chicago. We have a lot of Chicago programs. Um, you could definitely come visit us if you do a Chicago rotation, um, but we also do have all the main cities. So New York, Florida, uh, Miami, California, and everywhere in between. So I will just, let's see, pick, let's do internal medicine. As you can see, it went down from 330 to 120. And then if we did a location, let's say Illinois, we're to around 15. So as I mentioned, the specialty as well as location will be helpful, but we do have other tags that I'd like to share. So <clears throat> we recommend actually reserving about four to six months prior to the start of the rotation. The reasoning for that is to account for the visa process if necessary, as well as making sure we can get all your documentation in as well as the enrollment process. So if you are looking for, you know, even later this summer, this is the time to start sooner than later. And you are able to put in that specific month that you're looking for. So we do have rotations up until 2025. Uh, so if you are looking for even, even in the future uh, and you see a rotation that aligns with you, we always recommend reserving. As Ryan said, it is a first come first serve basis. So, uh, we have, you know, the seats available. If you do see one that aligns, we recommend uh, reserving. And as you scroll down, you will be able to see, you know, the price of the rotation. The price is specifically for the rotation itself, so it does not include accommodation. However, we do help you find accommodation that is part of uh, the coach's goal uh, to help you with any of that process leading up to the rotation start. The tags in the rotation type are very helpful. So these are the, oh, I pressed nursing, but <laughs> these are the different uh, rotation types that we offer. As you can see, hands-on, observership, uh, research, virtual. So that can be helpful in finding, you know, what you're looking for. And then also the tags. So if you are looking for example, like a hospital program or an inpatient exposure program, those are two boxes that you might wanna go through. 
Uh, we also have programs that, you know, the letter of recommendation uh, has the hospital letterhead or university letterhead. So if that is important to you, you can, you know, go into this area. And then again, we also do have the research rotations and virtual. So just to show a bit, uh, we do have 32 different uh, hospital programs uh, ranging from Florida to Chicago, um, as well as California. And then just to give a little more uh, insight with the virtual rotations, let's see. We have 43, again, <clears throat> anywhere from psychiatry uh, to OBGYN, endocrinology. So as you can see, there's just a lot of options and we don't want it to be overwhelming to you. Uh, that's truly where the advisors, me, Ryan, and the rest of our team uh, come in to help you. Uh, just because we understand, you know, we've, you know, been with uh, AMO for <laughs> a while. We're understanding of the, you know, the different clinics that we work with and hospitals, like what they can offer you. Um, so if you have any questions with the programs itself, that's where having a more like one-on-one -on -one conversation with any of the advisors would be very helpful for you. Uh, if anyone has questions, again, on any of the uh, rotations we offer, you can send your um, number, you know, to either me or Ryan or send your email so we can reach out. Um, I do see a couple questions coming in that I can cover. Uh, in terms of the how many letters of recommendation you receive, that's a great question. That is one from each rotation. I do know that there's a couple of rotations we offer, I believe one is in general surgery, that you are able to receive two. And the reasoning is because you're working with two physicians, but most of them is uh, one merit-based letter of recommendation. Yeah, thank you for covering that, Delaney. That's a really good question. And I know when we typically do see, um, we do try to, to, we do get more of those questions as the match season approaches. And we know, as I'm sure most might be familiar with, and if you are not, when you um, apply for the match, you want, you need to have, I should say, three letters of recommendation from U.S. physicians. Um, what does that mean? Well, you should probably do three clinical experiences um, with three different preceptors to give yourself the best ability to earn three you know, valuable letters of recommendation. Um, you can do more clinical experience. You can earn more letters of recommendation. Um, but when you submit those to the ERAS or when the preceptor does, you typically will need to submit at least three. Um, and as Delaney said, there are some rotations that you might be able to earn an additional letter because maybe you're working with additional preceptor. Keep in mind, it to earn, and I think this is really important information, to earn the best letter, you want to be able to put your all into the experience, which is why you typically can do one experience during a four week period and earn that letter of recommendation. Like it might be possible to try and do a virtual rotation during that same time period. And, you know, maybe you're putting in 20 hour days, but also recognize what that could mean for the quality of the LOR. If you're trying to do too much, if you're trying to put a hundred, we, we can't put a hundred percent into two different buckets, right? So just something to, to think about if you have time, if you can do you know, rotations far out, well in advance, that's going to give you the best opportunity to earn a strong letter. You can communicate with the doctor, you can discuss the expectations, you can build a long lasting relationship, and that is going to play into that letter. And again, that can be difficult for some individuals to do two rotations during the same time. I'm not saying it's impossible. Everyone learns differently. You know, maybe I feel comfortable doing that, but maybe Delaney doesn't. So it's just something to think about as you evaluate your readiness. And if you're not ready or you don't know if you're ready, that's where the AMO advisors, that's where we can really help you and have that conversation. Um, so I know I kind of rambled there, Delaney, but I definitely wanted to just mention that as you were covering that question. Yeah, that's a very great point. Thank you for sharing. I do want to just go a little bit more into the rotations itself and show how to apply. And then from there, we can go into the more of the conversation about letters of recommendation. So I'm going to go into, let's see, I'm going to internal, actually, 
cardiology. We're going to go into a cardiology program. Um, as you can see, again, if, if you need assistance in choosing, we're here to help. But once you do, you know, click into one of the rotations, this is actually where you're able to apply to the rotation. And it is 100% free to do so. So we do not have any, you know, application fees. Again, 100% free. And you are able to, you know, see the information. So most of our rotations are four weeks long. We do have a couple three month long rotations in the United Kingdom. But for the ones in the United States, again, the duration is usually four weeks long. Again, the price will be for the rotation itself. And it will ask you what type you're looking for. So this is where it would say, you know, observership or hands on, depending on what the rotation offers. And then with the start date, this is what Ryan was referring to with the different seats we have. So if you see that there's two seats available, that does mean that, you know, there is a spot available for that specific month. Um, if necessary, we uh, could assist with um, a special request if you don't see a month available, but because we have so many different rotations, uh, usually uh, we won't have to go that route. Um, as you can see, the price will be shown. Uh, we do have a uh, sense like a payment structure I'll just share quickly about. Uh, so in terms of actually reserving the rotation, uh, it is usually around $900 or so to reserve. So it would not be the full amount up front. Um, and then the rest of the amount would be due 45 days before the rotation begins, just so you are all aware of that process. When you scroll down, you're able to see, you know, the expectations, what you'll be learning, as well as the exposure type. So if you were interested in a hospital rotation versus clinic, uh, or even, you know, uh, associated with a university, um, the exposure type would share either clinic or hospital, as well as if there's inpatient exposure. And then if there are any additional requirements, it would share here. Uh, again, that's where the coach is there to help you. So we don't want any of that to be, uh, you know, overwhelming or seem like a lot, uh, because the coaches will be able to provide one-on-one -on -one support if you want to have, you know, like a Zoom call with them to make sure all of your documentation is in, or again, like assistance with the visa process, um, that's where they would be able to help you. Just wanted to bring, you know, that. Delaney, really quickly, just because I think it's a perfect time. Um, I was just answering a couple of questions regarding the USMLE and if it's required. So just for everyone, the USMLE is not required for the majority of the experiences we offer. There are a select few experiences that it is required, and typically it's a passing score. Um, those you would find on some of our hospital-based programs, but again, it's only a handful. And what I wanted to kind of show everyone, if the USMLE is required for an experience, it would be noted on the program details page that Del Delaney is going over right now, and it would be under the additional requirements section. So Delaney, do you mind just scrolling to the additional requirements section? Of course. Oh, Perfect. So if, you, if um, you're wondering, does this program um, require the USMLE, you would see it right in this section here. Oh, actually, you can scroll yeah. back. Up. Oh, my bad. Yep. Um, it's going to be the one before the present. Yep, it would be in this okay. section here. Because we want you to know beforehand if something like the USMLE is required to even be considered for approval. Um, so again, it's going to be in this additional requirement section. But again, I would say 90% of the rotations we offer do not require it. So for those of you that did ask that, it, the USMLE is not required. Thank you, Delaney. And let me clear this. Trying. Perfect. So I will go ahead and take over the screen one more time. We're going to go through some slides now that are really more pertinent to the match. And I think why everyone is here. How can you increase your match application? So let me go ahead and share my screen. And we'll start getting to some questions as well during this time. Okay, well, this is really exciting. And this, this is a slide that we love to cover, something I mentioned at the beginning of the presentation. You know, We're so excited to share this rate, this match rate. Um, but our annual survey showed that IMGs who participated in AMO clinical experience had a far higher chance of matching than those who did not. So when we think about how can I increase my um, percentage of matching? How can I increase my 
um, ability to match, right? The, the answer is US clinical experience and letters of recommendation. And the best part about that is the US clinical experiences that are offered, that AMO offers, all have the ability to lead to a, a strong letter of recommendation. And it's the statistics that we've gathered over the last several years that, that not only show that, but show it exceedingly, right? So the average U.S. citizen's IMG match rate is about 62%. Non-citizen IMG is about 58%. However, for AMO IMGs who have done a clinical experience with us, who have earned a letter of recommendation, and who have responded, um, if they have matched, almost 81% of respondents said that they had. I mean, that is a significant difference between U.S. citizen IMGs and non-U.S. citizens IMG. 20, almost 20 percentage points more. So when we think about how can I get, or how can I increase the mat, my match op, uh, chances, it's really getting U.S. clinical experiences and earning those strong letters of recommendation. And the best part is the statistics from AMO show that that will help you stand out. So we've had a lot of discussions about the letters of recommendation, how valuable they are. And I think this is going to be a good time to take some of the questions that we've had about letters of recommendation. But really, what the letters do is they allow you to stand out um, on the match, right? So they're merit-based, they're written by your preceptors. They're a very important part of the match application. Yes, there's maybe 40, 45 different kind of variables that play into that application. But LORs, letters of recommendation, are consistently ranked within the top three. Um, so that, again, is really going to be how you can stand out. Um, you know, we do have some programs that offer LORs on the hospital or university letterhead. And like, if that is what's important to you, you know, we definitely want to learn what is important to you, what your goals are, and we want to be able to provide recommendations for that. But what I will say as well, and I think a question came in earlier on, um, is is uh, observership at a university better than hands-on at a private? Like, not necessarily, right? Um, the the importance of the letter, and in the past, it may have been true. You know, the letterhead is important. 10, 15, 20 years ago, we weren't as technologically advanced as we are now, right? Individuals were looking through every single letter, hand, you know, looking through it and actually processing them. Now, everything's done through systems, through algorithms, the letter, the letter of recommendation, what's in the letter of recommendation, what's written about you, your strengths, your character, the affiliations of the doctor, that's what's important. Not necessarily the letterhead. But again, if that's important to you, we'll try to find a program that meets what you need. But along the way, we're also going to ask what your goals are, you know, what you hope to match into, what experience you have, how much knowledge on the U.S. healthcare system do you have. And we can then recommend a program that is going to be best suited for you and is going to give you the best opportunity to earn a letter of recommendation. And the most important part, again, is earning that letter and being able to connect with the doctor, being able to discuss your expectations for that letter, and then hopefully performing in a way that the doctor will write about that and will be able to meet your expectations and your goals. Um, so again, right, earning an LOR from your AMO rotation. Communicate early with your preceptor. Cannot stress that enough. That's why our coaches check in. They want to make sure that you're um, having the conversation with the doctor about that letter, because we know that that plays into how valuable it can be. And again, LORs are possible with both in-person and virtual rotations. There's no difference in the quality. It is just a different exposure type. And I think a question came in that had mentioned, one second, are virtual rotations seen as a red flag? I've heard a lot of people say that they're not considered as good. I will say that is completely false. And I can probably find a slide here. Um, Dr. Lynn, who is affiliated with the Harvard Residency Program, who hosts a virtual rotation for us, has a quote to back it up. And you know, I love this quote. Telehealth and virtual rotations are established now. They are here to stay. We just went through a very difficult and are still going through a very difficult period in traveling in um, getting to the, you know, getting to the U.S. for an in-person experience, right? COVID, the COVID disrupted a lot um, two or three years ago. And what it did disrupt was the educational system and how trainees learn here in the U.S. So what did AMO do? What did the preceptors that we work with do? 
Well, they built and developed telehealth rotations, some of the first of their kind. And now this is a standard, not only for patients in the US, like I have a telehealth appointment probably every three months. It's easier. You don't have to go to the doctor. You don't have to drive to the clinic, the doctor. You can do it in real time like this. It takes 10 minutes um, sometimes. Those are real, that is real US healthcare experience. And during the time of COVID, when you couldn't travel, when you couldn't learn in person, what, what did you do? One of the worst things that a trainee can have is a gap in their resume or a gap in their learning. So how do you fill that gap in? It's a virtual rotation. You don't need to travel. You can do it online with a steady internet connection. And the best part is you can still earn a valuable letter of recommendation. Why? Because you're virtually, you're in a telehealth environment. The doctor is still seeing patients. Um, you're still discussing with the doctor beforehand. You're still discussing after. Some telehealth experiences, you get direct patient interaction. So you can still talk with the patient similar to how we are communicating right now. Um, so definitely don't think of virtual rotations as a red flag. If anything, think of them as a great answer during your residency interview on what you did to continue your education when you couldn't travel in person, when you were unable to um, travel because of COVID. Maybe also, we know it's expensive. Maybe you don't have the funds right now, but you're saving up um, for something in person later. Because when you come in person, it also costs to travel. It costs to get housing. It costs for food. A virtual rotation is a great way to save money and still get U.S. clinical experience. I know another question came in um, about early year medical students. Maybe you have limited experience with the U.S. healthcare system. Maybe you're still in your basic science years, but you just want to know more. You want to learn more you can do a virtual rotation. It is a great way to set yourself up for success when you do come in person. One of the scariest things on day one, in my, in my opinion, is getting to know new people in person and talking and having the interaction. Well, guess what? If you do a virtual experience before you go in person, you're going to be communicating with the doctor, the staff, the patients during that. So when you come in person, now you don't have to worry about, you know, how do I present myself when I walk in? How do I talk? Like, You've already presented yourself to a doctor in a telehealth environment, to the staff. That is going to be second nature by the time you come in person. And then you can really focus on the in-person skills and knowledge. Um, so I know I kind of gave a long answer there, but I definitely want to just overstate the importance of virtual rotations, not only for your education, but for those in the United States who you know, don't have easy access to medicine, who might live far from hospitals, virtual rotations or telehealth in the U.S. is a is is a great way to practice and deliver medicine. So hopefully that was helpful. Um, and while I go back to the other slides, Delaney, any other questions you saw that came up? There is one <clears throat> question. I know we briefly covered this, uh, and I just want to you know put importance on this: is how many letters of recommendation uh, are needed for the U.S. residency match? That's a question that I you know, get a lot as an advisor. Um, and with that, we do recommend, uh, you know, it's okay. First of all, it's, it's necessary for uh, when applying to the U.S. residency match to have between three to four letters of recommendation. Um, however, we recommend, uh, you know, even having multiple experiences, more than that, uh, five, six different rotations, just because as we talked about before, there's different types that you're able to do. Um, you know, if you're still open to understanding what your specialty is, this could be a way to help you, you know, further clarify the route that you will be taking. Um, so I just wanted to mention the amount of letters of recommendation. Uh, again, 100% necessary to have three to four. Um, but if you are open, you know, the experiences can help you learn about, you know, where you would like to put your time. Um, again, we do have even pre-med uh, rotations. I know I haven't mentioned that yet, but you have pre-med rotations all the way up, you know, until graduate level, the research, which uh, there was a question about research and the importance of that. Ryan, do you want to share a little bit about the research rotations? Yeah, definitely. And I think that's the next slide. So perfect timing. So research and residency. Um, research is a very important aspect of your match application. If you are able to obtain a research experience, whether it's, you know, long research, short research, time frame, it's going to be important. And I think really what it boils down to is you want a well-rounded application, right? Clinical experiences, letters of recommendation, 
vast US healthcare exposure, different types of exposure, virtual research, that is all going to enhance your match application, right? Some, some individuals, I know myself, I wasn't necessarily the best test taker, right? And like when a test would come in, I'd get nervous, but I was always able to supplement my test taking skills with other aspects of my education and where I was strong student, right? And I imagine that's like many of us on here, right? There's always going to be areas where you don't feel maybe as comfortable or as confident, but there's going to be other areas where you excel, right? And if you excel in, you know, networking and meeting um, physicians, having those conversations, you're going to have a chance to get a really good letter of recommendation. On the other side, if you maybe are hesitant about earning letters of recommendation, you don't know how to ask, well, that's where AMO comes in. We're going to make sure that you feel confident asking for those so that you can excel in that category. But again, it's about having a well-rounded application and resident and I should say research does play into that, right? So 41% of residency directors consider research experience when deciding who to interview and 30% when deciding who to rank. So what does that mean? Well, that means you should do a clinical experience with the research component, just like you should do um, an observership or a hands-on, just like you should do a virtual experience. That's all very important for your residency application. Um, so these are just some of the specialties here that you might find where residency is most important. And we definitely encourage you, um, the National Residency Match Program, um, there's a very public website, gives out all the data points on um, IMGs who match, you know, what their applications look like. Definitely recommend researching, looking into that. We can share a link as well after for that website. Um, but again, use that as guidance, right? If you see a specialty up here, plastic surgery, and you're like, I want to be a plastic surgery, you know, I want to be a plastic surgery resident, I want to match into there. Well, I think what this says is you should definitely highly consider doing a research experience along with your other clinical experiences. Again, this is all for guidance. Um, we know everyone learns differently. We know everyone's at a different level of their education. Um, so it's, it's, I want to give more general based answers here, but also know connect with us as advisors and we're going to do our best and we're going to give you the best information. I'll be the first person to say, I don't have all the answers, but I can definitely provide my experience working with trainees who are matching. And we also have some great resources like Kapler Medical, IMG uh, Match, who we can also direct you towards who might be, have better guidance for you on a specific, um, on like a specific guidance for residency, for example. So again, don't hesitate to reach out to us we are a resource and I definitely want to save the last 10 to 15 minutes for questions. So um, just wanted to mention this before we stop recording, but don't hesitate to reach out to AMO, to myself, to Delaney, any of our team members. We want to be here for you. Even if it's not the right time to apply, use us as a resource. Um, I, I'm very familiar with USMLE forms, with Reddit. A lot of that information, it's dated. It's not necessarily incorrect because it could have been correct at some time, but the information is dated. Um, it could be left from seniors, right? So someone who matched 10 to 15 years ago. Again, maybe not wrong information, but not the most up-to-date information. AMO will always give you the most up-to-date information. We have, a, we have a blog that we compile blog posts for. We have a bunch of different resources on our website that you can use. Use us as a resource for getting knowledge about the US healthcare system. Ask us questions, we want to hear from you. Um, so I guess that's kind of where I wanted to maybe end my section before we jump into more questions um, you know, live, but Delaney, anything you wanted to mention or any other questions you saw come in before we stop recording? I do see a couple more questions in the, the Q&A section that we should go over. Perfect. So let me just go. And there's a lot of good questions coming in. I know we have that, it, this is ending at 11. So for those of you that do need to jump off, you know, if you have unanswered questions, leave your email address or your WhatsApp number in the chat, we'll get back to you. But also I know I have some time after 11, I can um, go a little bit further, Delaney might as well, but we definitely wanna get um, as much as we can answered. So thank you. Of course, yeah. So I can just answer a couple of them live from what I'm seeing. Um, someone did ask how much time do the research rotations last? and those are four weeks again. Um, so if you were, you know, interested in the research rotations as well as, you know, maybe doing an observership or hands-on, uh, we've seen students, you know, come to the US and do a couple rotations at a time uh, just to make the most of, you know, their experience in the US. Uh, so that 
uh, could be a route with the research rotations if you're interested in both. And um, for the research um, programs, I know there's, I know many of, many of us typically think that research can be six months, eight months, 12 months. The experiences that we offer are typically going to be four weeks with the research component. So that preceptor will set up a research project under that specialty that they work under. So you'll get real exposure to you know, how research is conducted in the U.S., uh, how you work with the preceptor to do research. Um, and I will also mention, we can't guarantee publishing because, again, we don't necessarily know, you know when a doctor is working on something that's being published, but also publications can take years. But what I will say is if you join a research program or a research experience and that doctor is working on a publication and you do contribute, you may have an opportunity to get published. But again, that's something we can't guarantee, um, but I always like to mention. Yeah, great point. And someone did ask, you know, how do you apply to the research rotations? They are, you know, you can find them in the same place as the rest of the rotations. You will just put, you know, the tag that I showed or no, it, the tag or type of rotation, uh, and it says research. So you are able to actually, it's either an observership or a hands-on rotation, and then with that research component. So that's a great question. Uh, I did get another question. When is the right time to apply? So we do recommend reserving and you know applying uh, for the rotation itself four to six months prior to the start of the rotation. Uh, that is just, you know, to give time uh, with the documentation process. You know, if we are helping with the visa, I can talk about that quickly, just the visa assistance we provide, because I do see another visa question. Um, would you like to keep recording or should we pause the recording? Yeah, I think, I think we could probably go into the stop recording in a moment just so that we can give everyone a chance to just ask more questions um, unrecorded. We know that, you know, that could play play into the questions asked, but yeah, I think that that sounds good. So I think at this time, everyone, we will stop the recording. Want to thank everyone for joining for this um, presentation. For those of you that are watching, um, you know, weren't able to attend, please don't hesitate to reach out to us to ask your questions. We're more than happy to help. It's pretty early here in Chicago. So you know, we know our team's online and we're ready to speak with you. Um, and thank you again for attending. This this is really fun. You know, we got some great questions and hopefully those are helpful. Delaney, anything on your end? Yeah, thanks everyone for joining. We appreciate it. We'll be staying on for a few more questions, but uh, yeah, if you have any questions at all, you know, you can reply to the email that you see this recording in um, and all the advisors will be able to help you. Again, we can even do a fun call, a Zoom call uh, or a WhatsApp call. We just want to be able to assist you, you know, in any way possible. So yeah, thanks again for watching. I hope you learned a lot about AMO and letters of recommendation and the US residency match. Yes, thank you everyone. So I will go ahead and stop recording. And we'll go ahead and just jump into some questions.